Pasadena Junior Chamber of Commerce is happy to present the 15th annual Junior Rose Bowl game between two of the nation's undefeated junior college football powers, Long Beach City College of California and Tyler Junior College of Texas. The pregame parade moves down famous Colorado Street in Pasadena, site of the annual New Year's Day Tournament of Roses. This is the official Junior Rose Bowl band made up from Pasadena's two high school bands. And here's lovely Joan Zeman, Miss Junior Rose Bowl. And she waves to the crowd. Dick Wall, chairman of the 1960 Junior Rose Bowl game, passes by with his whole family. Next is Hank Ives, president of the Pasadena Junior Chamber of Commerce and himself a former Junior Bowl chairman. Hey kids, where are you going? Here come the Monarchettes of Valley College in Los Angeles, lending some lovely atmosphere to the Gala Downtown Parade. Gala atmosphere is right, don't you agree? Long Beach City College administrators enjoy their visit to Pasadena. And she's from Long Beach, too. And right behind her is the colorful Viking band of Long Beach City College, as well-drilled as their championship football team. Now time out for a minute while the traffic crosses Colorado Street. Dr. H.E. Jenkins, president of Tyler Junior College, and Mrs. Jenkins. Those are real-life Apaches from the campus of Tyler, Texas, backed up by the world-famed Apache Bells and the famous Apache Band. Victory Bell has told 12 times this year in earning the Apaches a bid to Pasadena's Junior College Classic. Pretty girls are a trademark of the Junior Rose Bowl pregame parade, and don't they look lovely on a December morning? Or any morning, for that matter. The parade turns off Colorado Street toward the Civic Center and the main reviewing stand. This is little Linda Stolte, princess of the Elk Cerebral Palsy Program, participants in this year's charity game. Linda loves the parade too. Here she claps as the Apache Band marches by. Miss Junior Rose Bowl waves from the reviewing stand on the steps of Pasadena City Hall. One of our official Junior Rose Bowl photographers gets the picture as Miss Junior Rose Bowl leaves the stand with game chairman Dick Wall, Junior Chamber President Hank Ives, their wives and friends. And off they go to the Rose Bowl, just a few minutes drive away. And here we are. Hope you've got your ticket. Let's go on in. You can't tell the players without a program. Get them while they're hot off the press. Program, mister? Now let's find out who you're for. You gotta show your colors. Man, what's a game without a hot dog? Mmm, that tastes real good. Television crews are high on the rim of the Rose Bowl, ready to record the day's action. The press is here, too. That's Shab Glick of the Los Angeles Mirror. Jim Jarbo of our official Junior Rose Bowl camera crew has his cameras ready as Miss Junior Rose Bowl arrives with Junior Chamber officials and their wives. Out of the car, up to the box seat, and getting ready for the football game. Bands from junior colleges throughout the country are here to add a musical note to the day. Now the famous formation, here they are, 13 bands massed on the field, spelling out Junior Rose Bowl.
And football time now. Here come the Apaches of Tyler, unbeaten in 12 games, and the Pride of Texas. And from the other side, the Vikings of Long Beach, California. The captains come to the center of the field for the toss of the coin. Jimmy Lyons and Frank Brewer of Tyler, and Dave Groff and Wayne Zimmerman of Long Beach. Referee John Fouch tosses the coin. Tyler wins. And Fouch indicates that the Apaches will receive. Shake hands, men, and it will be kickoff time in just a few seconds. Final instructions to both the teams now. Mike Geyer's Long Beach All-American tackle kicks off. It goes deep to Tyler's Jimmy Lyons on the 10-yard line. Lyons gets back 22 yards before he's swarmed under by a pack of Vikings. First play from scrimmage finds Carly Mankister going at tackle, but Big Geyer's meets him, and it's no game. Frank Brewer this time takes a toss from Lyons, finds a huge hole on the right side, and picks up six before Don Crosby stops him. Here's the first big break of the game. Lyons drops back to pass. He eludes two men, but fumbles when hit by Crosby, and Frank Roy pounces on the ball for Long Beach. From the Tyler 26, Tiny D. Andrews takes a pitch out, and he moves for four yards before Butch Wright stops him. And now Big Lonzo Irvin gets the call. He smashes his way for four more. This time it's Irvin again, but he only makes a yard and falls just shy of a first down. Fourth down now, and Andrews tries to swing wide. Whoops, I'm trapped. Where'd all these guys come from? The bouncing ball is recovered by Tyler's Wally Whitley back on the 30-yard line. The Texans have held, but a few plays later, Tyler is in hot water again. Lyons drops an intended handoff. And that man, Roy, makes his second recovery of the game. The Vikings decline a penalty and take over on the Texans' 17. This time, they don't waste any time as Groff fakes a handoff, drops back to pass. It's a jump pass to Willie Martin for a touchdown in the corner of the end zone. It's Long Beach's turn to cheer now, and they really woof it up. Groff now goes to the air for the extra points, but it's batted down in the end zone. The first quarter ends a few plays later with Long Beach leading six to nothing. Long Beach now has the ball on Tyler's 21 as the second period starts. Irvin drives hard and picks up one yard. Viking coach Jim Stanglin looks like he wants another touchdown. And he sends Willie Martin in with the play. It works as Andrews picks up a first down on Tyler's 13-yard line. Now it's the big guy again, and Irvin plows down to the eight. It's Irvin once more, and nobody's going to stop him this time. It's another TD. And the happy days are here again for Long Beach. Groff passes for the extra points, and Andrews catch in the end zone makes the scoreboard light up. Long Beach 14, Tyler nothing, with better than 13 minutes to play in the first half. Geyers now, he gets off a long one. The kickoff is going to Henry Boxley, a yard in the end zone. Boxley bobbles the ball, picks it up, and runs it back out to the 19-yard line before he's smothered. Tyler coach Floyd Wagstaff wonders why his team can't get going, but it's going to get worse. Neither team was able to move the ball, but another big break came to Long Beach when Tim Jackard punts. Boxley, signaling for a fair catch, has another case of Butterfingers. Dave Christie recovers for Long Beach, and the Vikings are on the Texans 23. 
Groff strikes quickly again. A little jump pass to Willie Martin, and it's off to touchdown territory as Willie fakes his way past a couple of would-be tacklers for 23 yards. Three cheers for wonderful Willie. Andrews now runs wide for the extra point. He flies for it, but he's out of bounds short, leaving the score. Long Beach 20, Tyler nothing. Guyers kicks off again. And this time, Boxley holds on to the ball. He makes a nice run. Watch him go. He takes it upfield to the 35-yard line. This Tyler team has come back from way behind before, and the Apache Rooters are not giving up. It's go, 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 you Texans. And go they do. Boxley starts things off, but it's stopped for no gain on a nice tackle by Tom Bennett. This time, Boxley looks like he's going somewhere on an inside handoff, but Crosby pulls him down with one hand. Lyons this time goes to the air, he shoots a long one intended for Gene Staples. It's too long, but hold everything. Pass interference is called on the Vikes Andrews. As a result, it's first down for Tyler on Long Beach's 49. Lyons this time fakes a handoff. He drops back and throws another long one, barely missing the fingertips of Ron Pritchard. Lyons back to throw again. And narrowly misses having it intercepted as Martin drops the ball. Sticking to the air. This time Lyons connects with Ron Pritchard for a 13-yard gain and an important first down. Lyons this time drops back, then decides to run and picks up about 10 yards. Then he laterals, and there's Frank Brewer, Johnny on the spot to grab the bouncing ball and carry it seven more to the Viking 18. And that gives the Apaches a chance to cheer. And they make the most of it. Lyons is dropped for a seven-yard loss. But a personal foul is called against Long Beach for piling on. This gives Tyler another first down on the 12-yard line. Is he going to pass or is he going to run? Now he throws it, but misses fire in the end zone. Come on, boys. We're this close. Let's score, pleads Coach Wagstaff. Lyons is on target this time, hitting Staples right on the goal line for Tyler's first touchdown. And the eyes of Texas smile again. Lyons retreats a long way before he lets go for the two-pointer, finding Staples again in the corner of the end zone, and a couple of Vikings go clear up into the stands. And away to go. Now we're back in the ball game. cry the Apaches with only 50 seconds left in the half. Bobby Price kicks off with the cheering Apache still whooping it up. It's a long one clear to the goal line where Martin gathers it in. Willie starts to his left but is met at the 15 where he hands off to DeAndrews. A burst of speed takes him by two Apaches. A great block by Frank Roy wipes out another one, and Jim Smith takes the rest. Andrews, a 14-flat high hurdler, is long gone. 85 yards and an electrifying touchdown that completely shatters the Texans' enthusiasm. Jerry Orca tries for two points. But he doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Now there are 32 seconds left, and Long Beach has stretched its lead to 26 to 8. Geyers kicks off to Boxley. Boxley takes it and flips the ball back to Kenny Jones, and the little Texan scoots 24 yards before running into Bill Sprague. Hold everything.
The teams line up, but that's all for the first half, and the teams trot off to the dressing rooms. Don't go away, though, because halftime at the Junior Rose Bowl game is always exciting. Here's that Apache band again, and those high-stepping Apache bells. It's easy to see why one national magazine said the natural resources of Texas include cattle, oil, cotton, and the Apache Bells. A ticket to the Junior Rose Bowl game gives you all this and football too. But more important than that is the fact that the proceeds of the game go toward charitable causes. Today's game helped benefit the California Elks Major Project Committee, which administrates the Elk Cerebral Palsy Fund for Crippled Children. And most of the Pasadena Junior Chamber of Commerce's share is used for its many youth activity programs. Say, you don't see chorus lines any better than that in Las Vegas. A great halftime show by the Apache Bells. crowd loves them too, giving them a big hand as they parade off the field and turn the halftime entertainment over to Long Beach's Viking Band. They're a snappy looking bunch too. And following the band, here come the Long Beach Girls. Under the direction of Richard Jones, the Viking band goes through a series of intricate maneuvers that also bring applause from the gala gridiron throng. The Long Beach portion of the halftime about to conclude and we'll be playing football again in just a minute. Here come the teams back for another half of combat. Bobby Price gets the second half underway with a booming kickoff to Martin on the four. Willie starts off to his left just like before, but there's no Andrews this time. Martin weaves and twists his way 33 yards to the Vike 37. Irvin hits the middle for five yards. Groff, this time, tosses a screen pass to Gerald, and it's good for eight yards and a first down. The Apaches are still hoping for miracles, and their rooters never quit yelling, but neither team can do a thing in the third period. As the fourth quarter opens, Long Beach still leads 26 to eight, and the Vikings have the ball on their own 33. Groff fakes, keeps, and rolls out, picking up two yards. The workhorse, Irvin, takes it again, plows for four yards, but a penalty on Tyler gives the Vikings a first down on the Apache 46. An over-anxious Apache jumped the gun, and Tyler loses another five yards for offside. Irvin takes a pitch out and sweeps around the right for six more yards. Now it's Andrews' turn once again. He slices left guard, veers to the right, and gains 10 before being sandwiched down. Andrews on another quick opener. He darts for six more to the Tyler 19. Irvin, Long Beach's 200-pound All-American fullback, takes it all the way around left end with help from a block by Andrews near the goal line. And touchdown number five 
brings just as much excitement as the first one to these happy gals. Groff's pass intended for Ernie McBride misses fire in the end zone, but Long Beach really doesn't need two more as the Vikings lead 32 to 8 with less than 13 minutes left in the game. Geyers kicks off. Again, it goes to Boxley. And the Apache halfback returns it to the Tyler 39 before he's thrown hard out of bounds right in front of the Tyler bench. And tempers flare, but quick work by the referee and Tyler coaches cool things down and a pair of personal foul penalties offset each other. Let's get settled down, boys, and back to football. Lions pass this time is snared by Staples for a gain of six yards. Brewer gets the call and hits straight up the middle for five and a first down. Lyons takes to the air again. He throws the beauty right to Ron Pritchard, but Max Miller took it out of his hands, and Long Beach suddenly has the ball again on their own 37. McBride, getting the ball on an end around, throws a mighty heave intended for Martin. There it goes, but it's broken up. Groff throws a shorty to Andrews. And look at that fella squirm. He gets eight yards before he's finally glued down. Irvin takes a pitch out, but is met at the line of scrimmage by Dick Ferris, Tyler's 240-pound All-American guard. On fourth down, Jackard is back to kick. But wait a minute, he's going to throw. And Irvin takes it and runs down the sidelines for 19 yards and a first down on the Tyler 36. Ed Reddick now in at quarterback. He throws to Martin, who makes a great catch. It's good for 18 yards. It's that man Irvin again. The big fullback bursts over the right side for 12 yards before they catch him on the six yard line. And now Andrews slips over tackle, moving to the four. The Apaches get tough down close. They stiffen and hurl Irvin back for a yard loss. Now, on third down, Groff passes to Martin on the line of scrimmage, and Willie speeds into the end zone for Long Beach's sixth touchdown and the third scored by Martin. The Vikings whoop it up again, and nobody even worries when Steve Sutherland's left-footed placement goes wide of its mark. They don't care when he misses because Long Beach's lead has been lengthened to 38-8. Now watch this tricky play. As Geyers walks back from fixing the ball, Sutherland suddenly boots it for an attempted onside kick, but Ron Pritchard catches it on the 33. Ron runs a long way, but most of it's laterally. He finally turns upfield and gets to the 42 before he's stopped by Irvin. Things start getting rough again, and this time Long Beach is penalized 15 yards. The Apache Yell leaders keep pleading for another touchdown, and late in the fourth period, Tyler begins to roll again. From his own 25, Brewer starts things with a pitch out. That's good for five yards. Now Kenny Jones starts to move for the Apaches. He breaks loose over center and darts for 18 yards. The same play works like magic, 
and Jones picks up 12 more and the first down on the Long Beach 37. Brewer gets it this time and he rolls for 17 clear down to the Long Beach 20. The Vikings are waiting this time and Brewer gets but two. It's Jones again and the little fella slashes for seven yards. The Apaches knocking on the door and Wright gets the first down with a couple of yards to spare on the eight yard line. Brewer now takes a pitch and he outraces the Long Beach defenders to slide into the end zone for Tyler's second touchdown. And boy oh boy that's what these Tyler gals have been waiting for all afternoon. Jones now passes to right in the end zone and at least Tyler wins the battle of the conversions two to one. But the scoreboard still has Long Beach ahead 38 to 16 with only 38 seconds left to play. Price now kicks off. It goes to Jim Townsend Long Beach's 130 pound halfback. Townsend brings it back out returning at 19 yards. Reddick bobbles a handoff and when a penalty is signaled the crowd mistakes it for a sign that the game is over. It's not however. Jubilant rooters race on the field and make short work of one of the goalposts. But hey wait a minute you guys the game is not over. But down go the goalposts anyway. Long Beach's Jim Stanglin sends his boys back for another play with one second left. We got to get our money's worth out of this game, don't we? And at least one goal post is still standing. And now this is the end as Reddick's pass is nearly intercepted, ending in another moment of frustration for the Apaches. It's an unhappy moment for the Texans from Tyler as they realize their undefeated record is gone. But it's a happy moment for Jim Sangland as the victorious Viking coach accepts congratulations from players and fans. Tyler's coach Floyd Wagstaff looks a little sad. But he manages to smile as he waves goodbye. Staglin shakes hands with his team and the Viking coach staff gets carried off the field in the traditional style. There's the head man. Some are mighty happy and some are mighty sad as the 1960 Junior Rose Bowl game comes to a close. For Long Beach, it is the culmination of their greatest season, 10 straight victories and a national championship. For Tyler, it'll be a long ride home, but full of wonderful memories of their stay in Pasadena. It's all over for 1960 as Long Beach wins 38 to 16. Now is the time to start planning to attend the 1961 Junior Rose Bowl game. Once again, on Saturday, December 9th, the number one junior college team in California will meet the number one team from the rest of the nation.